So far in this series, we have learned how to analyze data using the basic accounting equation and T accounts. Uh, we have also learned what a chart of accounts is, as well as the general rules for all of those five main account types and how we analyze those using debits and credits. So we're going to continue on this series with actually bringing this to, to fruition to figure out how to do some journal entries. So I have down here the same data that we used for um, analyzing transactions using the basic accounting equation and T accounts. So let's use the same exact data to learn how to do some journal entries. Now before we jump right into it, there's a few rules to remember about journal entries. Um, for one, for every single transaction, there will be at least one debit and one credit and that's always and forever. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that for um, these transactions the uh, debit amounts will always equal the credit amounts and you'll see what I'm talking about in a moment. Um, the last thing to keep in mind and this is for journal entries in particular um, the debit will always come before the credit and even if there's multiple debit accounts or multiple credit accounts all of the deb debit accounts for each transaction will always come before the credit accounts for those trans for that transaction. So let's try analyzing that with this first transaction here on January 1st. I'm going to start by plugging in that date. We have Christopher Knowles starting a company by transferring $50,000 from his personal bank account to a business account. So let's practice those questions that we used last time. Uh, one, what accounts are being affected? Now um, remember, we're always going to analyze this from the business's perspective. So I know that when Christopher Knowles transfers $50,000 to the company's account, I know that the company's cash balance is going to be increasing. So let's analyze cash. Uh, we know that cash is being affected. We know that cash is increasing because the company is receiving cash. Uh, cash, what is it? It is something we own, so that would be an asset. Now let's use our little pregnant LC cheat sheet over here. So we know that it cash is an asset that is increasing. So that would be a debit. So cash is actually our debit account. Remember that rule we just discussed? Cash is a debit and debits will always come first. So let's plug in that 50,000 for cash. Okay, moving on next we need to find one more account here. So what happens when an owner makes a contribution to their company? That would be increasing their interest in the company. So that would be Christopher Knowles Capital. So let's go through the anal um, analyticals of that just to kind of figure out what's going on. Let's analyze that. Uh, we know that it is Christopher Knowles Capital. We know that his interest in the company is increasing. Uh, we know that it is a capital account. So let's take a look. Capital increasing. That would be a credit. So we are going to credit Christopher Knowles Capital. Now notice that when I put in that credit account, I indented a little bit. Um, this is going to be typical for every single journal entry you do. Your debit will always be to the line, and then once you do your credit account, you have to indent it slightly. So let's go ahead and see how this looks with another transaction. The next one is on January 3rd. So here on January 3rd, the company purchased $2,000 in supplies on account. Now try pausing the video and analyzing this. What's happening here? Uh, we have two accounts that are being affected. I'm just going to pick out one of the most obvious ones. What are we getting? We are getting supplies. That's one of the first ones. So let's see what's going on with supplies. Uh, do we have more supplies or less supplies? Is the account balance going up or down? Well, it's going up. We have more supplies than before. Uh, what type of account are supplies? Uh, supplies are assets. Remember, if you're having trouble categorizing these accounts, you're going to want to go back to one of the first lessons in these series, categorizing asset types or elements. Um, now that we know that our asset supplies is going up, we know that it will be a debit. So debits come first. So let's go ahead and put supplies on that line for the 2000 that they purchased. And now let's find out what that credit would be. 
Now, the next little keyword that we see for this transaction is on account. So what does that mean? Are we paying them now or later? If we have purchased supplies on account, that means that we are going to be paying them later, which means that we owe them money. So that would be accounts payable. We are going to be paying them in the future. So accounts payable, is it going up or down? Do we owe more, do we owe less? Well, we owe more now. We just made a purchase, so we owe them that money. Um, what type of account? Is accounts payable. Remember, payable, a good keyword there is it's going to be a liability since it has that payable in it. And would that be a debit or a credit? Well, let's take a look. Liabilities, increasing credit. Now, you may have noticed by now that there's a bit of a trend going on here. We have one debit and one credit and one debit and one credit. And remember, every single transaction will have at least one debit and at least one credit. It could have more, but typically uh, for these um, basic ones at the early level, they will have one debit and one credit. So if you're able to fill in with confidence the debit or the credit, then it's pretty easy to figure out what the other ones will end up being. Um, in this case, um, let's take a look at this next one and see what I mean. Um, let's see. January 6th, the company paid 3,000 for rent for the month of January. So let's say that you're analyzing this and you know that, okay, you see paid, there's a good keyword. So you know that cash is one of your accounts and you see that you're paying rent for the current month. So that would be rent expense. So you know it's cash, you know it's rent expense, but you're not quite sure um, how rent expense is going to be handled. Well. Let's start by focusing on the cash first then, since you're pretty comfortable with analyzing cash by, at this point. So what account is being affected? Well, cash. Um, is the account going up or down? Well, we're paying something, so that means it's decreasing, it's going down. Uh, what type of account is that account? Well, cash is an asset account. So how do we decrease an asset? Okay, let's go over here. Assets, decrease credit. So I know that cash is going to be my credit. So let's go ahead and skip a line. Because as we know, credits will always come after debits. So at this point, even if we don't really know how to analyze rent expense, if you're stuck at this point, if you're taking an exam, um, we know that it has to end up being a debit. We can fill in the blank. But just to kind of go through the steps anyway, uh, what account is being affected? Rent expense. Do we have more expense or lent less expense? We have more expense. Our expenses are increasing, so that's going up. Uh, what type of account is rent expense? Uh, it's an expense account. So how do we make an expense account go up? Debit. And that's how we can analyze that. But keep in mind, if you ever are stuck, you can kind of think about those rules and what exactly is going on there. Okay, let's take a look at our next one. January 8th. On January 8th, the company paid one year of insurance in advance. So let's start with the easy part. We see a keyword, paid. Pretty good indication that cash is going down. It's going to be credited. So let's analyze it though. Paid, what account is being affected? Cash, is the account going up or down? It is going down. What type of account is that account? It's an asset account. And would that be a debit or a credit? Well, let's see, assets, cash is going down. So that would be a credit. So let's skip a line. Oh, one second, that's not cute. Let's skip a line and indent since we are dealing with a credit account. And how much are we paying? $6,000. Now let's take a look at the other side of that. We paid one year of insurance in advance. That in advance means that we can't expense it all right away. So what we're going to do is put it into that prepaid insurance account. So that will be our debit. And let's really quickly just analyze that just for fun. So we have prepaid insurance being affected. We have more prepaid insurance. We just bought it. It is an asset account. Remember, prepaids are assets. They have a future economic benefit. And it would be a debit because it's an asset that's going up. So keep practicing these over and over again. Even if you don't get them right now, that doesn't mean that you will not get them if you keep practicing. Okay, let's look at this next one. 
On the 15th, the company made $5,000 in cash sales from January 1st to January 15th. So we were pretty comfortable with cash at this point. So what's happening with cash? Is it going up or down? It's going up and eventually you're going to be able to skip some of these questions. For example, cash, whenever it's increasing, it's going to be a debit. Whenever it's decreasing, it is going to be a credit. So that's pretty nice and simple. So we see that we made cash sales, so cash is increasing. So cash would be our debit. Let's take a look at the second half of this. Uh, the company made 5000 in cash sales. So what did we sell? We sold some services. So whenever we earn something, remember that loose definition we've been using? When we earn something, we get to record some revenue. Which of these accounts would be a revenue account? Fees earned right there. So let's put in our credit of fees earned. Remember, try going through and um, even if you start getting really comfortable, make sure that you can analyze them using these questions because it may help you later on once you get to some of the more difficult stuff. Now notice we're going to move over to page two. That's not a big deal. We're just moving on to the next page. And this is actually going to come into play once we start learning how to post to a ledger. That's when we're going to use this long column right here. So let's move on to page two. On January 21st, the company paid off a supplies company $2,000 for the supplies purchased on January 3rd. So let's analyze what happened there. Really quickly, before we even go back to January 21st, or sorry, January 3rd, we know that we see that keyword right down here of paid. Now remember, what does paid mean? That means that we spent some cash. So what do we do to cash when it's going down? We have to credit cash. So right away, I'm going to skip a line and I know that I'm paying cash. Nice and simple. Okay, now let's take a look at the other half of that. We are paying off something from January 3rd. So what happened on January 3rd? We purchased supplies on account. We are paying off this account's payable that we owe. So let's try analyzing that because this is one of the first times we're seeing a liability go down. Um, what account is being affected? Uh, accounts payable. Is it going up or down? It's going down. We're paying some of it, some of it off. Uh, what type of account is accounts payable? It is a liability. And how do we decrease a liability? We debit it. Hence why we are debiting it here. So far, so good. Okay, let's take a look at that next one. Uh, January 25th, CK Company recorded $1,500 of services provided on account. So we didn't receive cash yet. We are going to receive cash later. So what does that mean when we receive cash later? Which of these accounts means that we are going to receive money in the future? That's our accounts receivable. So do we have more accounts receivable or less? We have more. We provided services, which means the amount that we are going to receive in the future has gone up. What type of account is that account? It's an asset. So how do we increase an asset? Debit. So let's debit accounts receivable for the 1500 And the second part of that, services provided. What are services provided? Those are revenues. So that would be our one revenue account, fees earned. Let's fill in that blank. Getting better with every journal entry, right? Let's take a look at our last one. On January 31st, the company made 3,000 cash sales during the second half of the month. So we know that we are receiving cash. That's an easy one. What do we do when we receive cash? We debit cash. And what do we do when we provide services on account? Well, fees earned. There's our second part. So as you can see, um, the questions are going to help you along at first. And while it is nice to kind of go back and practice with those, eventually you're going to get so familiar with how certain accounts are being affected that you don't have to go through those questions each and every time. Although it is good to uh, use it for practice. You're going to notice whenever you provide services on account, you're going to be crediting fees earned or service uh, service income or whatever your revenue or income account is. Uh, whenever you receive cash, you are going to be debiting the cash account. 
And uh, the other side of that, whenever you spend cash, you will be crediting it. So you're going to get familiar with these little subtle differences. And as you go through, you're going to notice that there's some things you pick up very quickly and other things that you, know, you don't see as often. So it will take some practice. So continue to look for opportunities to practice these journal entries. And if you want to, go ahead and start this from the beginning. Try journalizing them on your own and then check at the end and see how you did. In the meantime, happy studying.